Today I'm going to show you how you can build a beautiful blogging website just like this together with a practical and effective newsletter integration. The tool we will be using for this is called Substack. You can think of Substack like a mix between a blogging platform and an email marketing tool. That means whenever you publish a piece of content on Substack, it will be posted on your website as an article, but at the same time it will be sent out as an issue of your newsletter to all of your subscribers. The idea behind Substack is that you can build an independent newsletter business. You can publish free content to build an audience and later on you can monetize that audience by publishing additional premium content which only your paid subscribers can access. And in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can set up the Substack website, the newsletter and the monetization. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the link miketutorial.com slash substack. And when you open that link, you will automatically be redirected to the correct landing page where we start the tutorial. But you don't have to use that link. You can also go directly to the substack website. And this is how it looks like. Once you're on the Substack website, the first thing that you have to do is you have to click this orange button, create your Substack. Then you can connect your Twitter account. This is quite useful if you already have an audience on Twitter, like a couple of hundred of subscribers, then this will help you to grow your Substack newsletter a little bit faster. So if you want, you can connect your Twitter account. Uh, I'm going to skip this for now. I'm going to type in my email address which I generated for this tutorial and then press agree and continue. The next step is the most important one. Here I have to create my author profile and I recommend you that you make sure that this is a really good profile because this profile will be all over your Substack website. Whenever you publish a new post, you will be linked with this author profile uh, below the post. So make sure that you type in your name correctly I'm going to type in Mike tutorial and then I'm going to paste a little bit of filler text uh, to my bio. So in your case, obviously you're going to write a little bit about yourself, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to paste this dummy text. And then obviously up here at the top, by clicking this orange plus, you can add a profile picture. And this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to add a nice, a profile picture of mine and then I can press the orange button continue. On this next page we have to create our actual publication. This page is also very important. Um, here I can enter the name of my publication. This will be the title of my website and the name of my newsletter. I'm going to call this Mike's Mountain Mountain magazine. What is it about a place where you can read about beautiful mountains, wildlife and nature? This is going to be my short description. The third field on this page is the web URL. So that is the domain that people have to type in in their address bar here at the top if they want to reach your website. So make sure that it's a good do uh, URL. I'm going to go with Mike's Mountain Magazine.substack.com and then I can press continue. Uh, Substack, by the way, offers the possibility to connect the custom domain later in your settings. So if you don't want to use that Substack subdomain, you can connect your own uh, domain later on. This is no problem. I'm going to go with this and click continue. The next step is to import your mailing list. If you already have a newsletter on some other platform like Patreon, MailChimp, ConvertKit or whatever, you can upload your contacts here and they will automatically be your subscribers of your newsletter and you don't have to start from scratch. I'm going to skip this again. This page is similar. You can add a couple of seed subscribers. So for example, friends and family. 
you could paste in their email addresses and they will become your first subscribers to um, get you going a little bit faster. I'm going to skip this again. This page is really not that important. It uh, is only relevant if you want to read other people's Substack. Then you can select a couple of interests or topics that you're interested in. So I'm going to skip this again. And now I'm already finished. It says success. And when I click the orange button, I will be redirected to my Substack website. And this is how it looks like at the moment. Frankly, right now it looks kind of boring and empty. So what we are going to do now is step by step, we are going to fill it with content. The first thing that I want to show you is your writer's dashboard. When you click this button up here at the top right called dashboard, you will be redirected to your writer's dashboard. You can think of this dashboard like a control room. If you want to change something about your Substack publication or want to add a new post or uh, change the styling, the settings, you will do it right here in the writer's dashboard. So this is quite important. And if you've made a setting here, and we're going to make a couple of settings in a moment, but if you make a setting on this dashboard and want to see how it looks like on the website, you can navigate back to the home page by clicking this uh, title up here, and then you will be redirected to the front page of your website. This is quite important to know. And by the way, this right here is exactly how the website will look like to your potential visitors that go to this link, that go to your website, uh, with the exception of this menu up here, quite obviously. This menu is only uh, for you because you are locked in right now. That's the reason why it is visible. But other than that, this is exactly how the web page will look like to your visitors. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to my dashboard by clicking dashboard here again. And I'm going to show you how you can create new posts and articles on your Substack website. And uh, to do that, you just have to navigate to this posts section of your writer's dashboard. Okay, so let's fill up the publication with a little bit of content by creating a new post for your Substack website and your Substack newsletter. You can do that by pressing this button right here called new post. Yeah, it couldn't be simpler. You just press the button and then the Substack text editor will open and you can start writing your post. Now this text editor is very minimalistic. It's not complicated. Uh, you probably are familiar with most of the functionality from other text editors. You can put in your title right here. I'm going to post, put in my title, why mountains are great for the body and soul. Then you can enter a subtitle as well. I'm going to just uh, post a little bit of filler text again for the subtitle. And then you can click below your author tag right here and start writing the actual blog post. So this is my first paragraph of my first Substack blog post. Blog post. And uh, obviously I'm not going to write the entire article right now because you would uh, be bored. I'm just going to paste a little bit of filler text again and then my article is complete. And as I told you, uh, like up here at the top, you can find uh, the navigation bar, the toolbar where you have your usual text editor settings. So I'm going to show you a few of them. For example, if I wanted to turn this into heading one, I just uh, select it and then press the, the style drop down up here and press heading one. Or in this case, I'm going to choose uh, heading two. And now this has become a heading two. If you want to make something bold, for example, this section is really important. You can select it, go to the toolbar and press the B for bold, and then it becomes bold. And if you want to turn it cursive, you can press the cursive button and so on and so forth. I think you're familiar with these normal text editor tools. You can also add images in here. So if I go to a new line and uh, click this insert image uh, 
icon here and then press upload image. I can then select a nice image, in my case an image uh, about the mountains, and then it will be inserted into your blog post. So again, nothing special. This part of your, of your toolbar uh, should, be, should be quite familiar. However, this right side of the toolbar with the two drop-down menus, buttons and more, this is specific to Substack and so I'm going to go into a little more detail here. Uh, for example, when I press the buttons drop-down, I can add call to action buttons. Lots of different call to actions that you can make. For example, you can make a subscribe now call to action and then this will be added into your blog post. And when the blog post will be published, this button will be part of the post and people can subscribe here. Or you could add another call to action button where you make a special offer for your premium subscriptions, for your premium post. And then you could uh, put that button in here. So lots of different call to action buttons. You can do let people donate a subscription, share the post, lots of different things that you can do. You can just uh, play around with this a little bit and find which of these call to, call to action buttons are relevant for you. And then there's a little more functionality in the more drop down menu where you can, for example, add a paywall so that only part of the blog post is ac accessible to the free subscribers and the rest is behind the paywall. You can add a divider, a footnote if you're doing scientific writing or want to link uh, your sources, lots of different functionality. You can play around with this a little bit. Once you finish the post, you can preview how it will look like to the actual reader by pressing this preview button. And then you will see how this would look like on mobile. Um, up here, you can see how it looks like on desktop. And um, if anything looks strange, you can go back to the blog post and edit it. If you like the preview, you can just press done and you will come back to the blog post where you could make some edits. And once you're satisfied with your blog post, you can press this continue button, this colored continue button up here at the top right. This is what I'm going to do it. I'm going to click it. And then I have to make a couple of settings regarding uh, this post. I have to decide if I want to publish it for everyone or only my paid subscribers. Right now I cannot do that because uh, we are going to set that up later, the monetization features. So as of now, I can only publish this as a free post for everybody. You can make a couple of settings regarding the comments, if you want to allow comments or not. You can decide the social preview, if someone shares this post on social media, how it will look like. You can change the, the preview picture, the preview image. This is the image that will be displayed on the home page as part of the post preview snippet. This is actually quite important. Uh, by default, Substack takes the first image in your post, but you can also uh, upload a custom preview image right here at this point by clicking upload new. Uh, I'm okay with this uh, image, so I'm going to leave it. And then you can make a couple of other settings. For example, you could decide whether you want to schedule it or not. If I activate this checkbox, I can set a time when this post should go public. I'm going to disable this again because I want to publish it right now. And I'm going to press this red button down here uh, at the bottom right, send to everyone now. And now it is loading and now it has been published. Your post has been published. It's time to get the word out. If I click on this post, I can see how this post looks like. And I think it's a really nice post, very clean and minimalistic interface. As I told you in the beginning, Substack's philosophy is to be very minimalistic and to have as little distractions as possible and the maximum focus on the actual content and reading experience. I'm going to click the title up here at the top. This is how the post would look like on the website right now. Here you have the preview image, then you have the title, the subtitle right here, as I told you, is also quite important. And here you have 
your author profile. So you're linked with your author profile. And uh, when somebody clicks on it, they will be redirected to this post. And this is how the post would look like in my email account. So my email account is in dark mode, so it looks uh, it is converted to dark mode. But this is exactly how it will look like. Uh, as I told you in the beginning, whenever you publish a post on your Substack website, it will be posted as an article on your, on your Substack website. But at the same time, it will be sent out as an issue of your newsletter to all of your subscribers. And this is how the email would look like. Really minimalistic again. People can share it, they can like it, they can comment it. Now back to the website. While I have to say this looks a little bit better than in the beginning, I still think that this looks a little bit bland and boring. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill up this website with a little bit of content, with a couple of posts, and then we're going to change the theme and the style of the entire page. And I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, so I have taken a couple of minutes and populated the entire website with uh, posts so that we have something to work with. Uh, if I go back to the dashboard, I created all of these posts as I showed you before, just by clicking this new post button and then the text editor opens and do, then you can uh, create a new piece of content. So nothing special. Once you've created the posts, you have an overview right here with all of your posts. And if you want to edit a post, you can just click the three dots and then edit post and you will be taken to the text editor where you can change the content of the post. And now I would like to talk a little bit about this writer dashboard menu up here. So this post section you are already familiar with. This is right here where you can create new posts. Uh, this podcast tab, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but uh, essentially with Substack, you can also create a podcast where you publish podcast episodes in a similar way that you publish your normal posts, your normal written posts. If that is interesting to you, then you can uh, explore this for yourself. The next tab is your subscribers. Here you can see how many people subscribe to your to your Substack. In my case, I don't have any subscribers yet because this is just a test account. The next tab, tab the stats tab. Here you can see how much uh, traffic you get on your website. In my case, I have zero visits. You can see how many emails have been sent out and opened. So a lot of statistics that will be useful to you to see how, how well your Substack publication performs. The next link in the writer's menu are the recommendations. So what you can do here, you can write Substack publications to for other people's Substack and uh, also receive recommendations from other people so that your Substack grows a little bit faster. And then the most important uh, tab in the writer's dashboard is the settings tab. And this is where I want to uh, go into a little bit more detail. So I'm going to click on settings. And now I am on the settings page. I have good news and bad news for you. The bad news are all of the settings of your Substack publication, website and newsletter are on this page. And because of that, this page is huge. And at times it can be a little bit overwhelming. However, the good news are that um, while this page is huge, there is only one place where you can find all of your settings. They are not spread throughout your account. You don't have to search for them. They are not all over the place, but they are in uh, or on this single settings page. Uh, up here at the top, you have this search bar. This is very useful to navigate your settings. So if you want to, for example, change the style and the theme of your website, you can look if there's a setting for it by typing in style. In this case, there is a setting for the style um, and it says edit your publication theme, uh, set color, layout, font and styles for your publication. And this is the, the first setting that I want to focus on and show you in a little bit more detail. And later on, we're going to look at a couple of other settings. 
I'm going to click on edit theme. And this brings us to this uh, page here where we can make settings regarding the look of our website. Uh, up here at the top, there is a drop down menu. And when I click this, I can preview how different parts of the website will look like. Uh, I'm going to go to the home page. This is the most important uh, part of the website. And um, now we are going to modify this. As I told you a little bit earlier, Substack is rather limited when it comes to the customizations because they have a very minimalistic philosophy. So they want you and your readers to have as little distractions as possible and a maximum focus on the actual content. That is why Substack offers only two themes, two different layouts. And this is what we can work with. I'm going to switch to the magazine theme from the default theme because it looks much better. And this is how it will look like, how the website looks like now. And I really like that layout. It is still quite minimal, but uh, it looks much better than the, than the default layout. And you have these, uh, the large posts in the middle and a couple of other posts right here. And all of your posts, uh, all of the other posts are down uh, here in the lower part of the website. One important information for you is that this, if you uh, switch to the magazine theme and it looks kind of weird, then um, you have to know that the magazine theme only works once you have four posts. Because this section up here always has to include four posts. And these four posts are either your four uh, most recent posts or four posts that you manually pinned to the top of the website. But if you have less than four posts, this is not going to work and it's going to break the design. So make sure that when you switch to the magazine layout, you have at least four posts. A general tip that I can give you or something that I've noticed while changing and playing around with these uh, style settings, sometimes you make a setting and it looks really weird or the setting doesn't show up. This can be because Substack, uh, sometimes it takes a little bit until the setting that you make is actually shown. That means if you follow the tutorial and make a setting, but it do doesn't look like on my screen, then you can wait a little bit, wait a couple of minutes, like 10 or 15 minutes, and then usually the issue or the problem will be resolved because Substack sometimes takes a couple of minutes to update the design settings. This is a little bit annoying, but... Um, yeah, it's not the end of the world. The next uh, setting that you can make is the background. So right now my background is white, but I could also make uh, turn this into a dark mode website by selecting the, a dark background color. And this is how it would look like now. So if you prefer a website with dark mode, you can change that right here. For now, I'm going to go back to the normal white mode and set my accent color to green because green is associated with nature and mountains. That's why I'm going to change it to green. And now the accent color has been changed to, to green, not only on my website, but also in my settings. As you can see, it is no longer red. The buttons are now green as well. Down here, you can change the fonts. There are a few options that you can choose from. I'm going to go with the heavy sans font. Uh, as the title and the body, so the text of your posts, I'm going to leave it at Classic Serif. Once you're finished customizing your design, you can click on Set Theme. And then your theme has been changed. When I click the title here at the top and go back to the home page, um, this is how the website looks like now. And I have to say, I really like it. It looks clean, minimalistic, and uh, very professional with this magazine layout. There's one more important setting that we have to make regarding the layout and the style of the website. If I go back to my dashboard and then go to settings and then scroll down to this section right here where it says square logo and cover photo. Here you can add two custom uh, photos and images that will be displayed on your website. First of all, the logo, which will be displayed at the top right. 
So I'm going to upload a logo image. In this case, I'm just going to use this mountain as the logo image and it will automatically be changed into a square logo. It says uploading. And now the upload has been finished. And as you can see uh, up here at the top, there is now at the top left, there is now this uh, small square logo. This is not only present in the writer's dashboard, but also when I go to the website, it is also visible. So your visitors can see this logo up here. Uh, this is a way to add a little bit of customization and um, your personal touch to this website. And let's upload the second important photo, which is the cover photo. So this one right here. The cover photo will be displayed on your welcome page. And uh, I'm going to show this to you. If I open a new private tab and go to Mike's Mountain uh, my, mikesmountains.substack.com, which is, which is my domain. The first time a visitor goes to your website, they will, they will not be redirected to the front page, but to this welcome page, where they get asked to subscribe to your website. Uh, they don't have to subscribe immediately. They can also click let me read it first. Right now, uh, what is being displayed here is this uh, logo image. But when I uh, go back here and upload a cover photo, for example, let's uh, take this uh, mountain from the Himalayas as the cover photo. Um, then in a moment we will see, now it has uploaded. When I go to the welcome page right now, here's a little preview of the welcome page. Now this cover photo will be shown here. So again, still looks very minimalistic, but adds a little bit of a personal touch uh, to this welcome page, which I really enjoy. And then people can subscribe here. And uh, uh, if they don't want to subscribe, they can just click the let me read it first and will be redirected to the homepage of your Substack website. Okay, so far so good. Now we've set up the entire Substack website and uh, because the newsletter is automatically integrated, into Substack, this is now also set up. So whenever we publish a new post, uh, this new post will not only appear on the front page right here, but will also be automatically sent out to all of your newsletter subscribers. However, in the beginning, I told you that with Substack, you can build a newsletter business. And a newsletter business implies that you have a way to earn money. And indeed, you can earn money with your Substack uh, website and newsletter by publishing premium content. All of this content right here is free content, which means everybody can access it. But when you publish premium content, only your paid subscribers can access this. And I'm going to show you how you can set up the premium content uh, so that you can start earning money with your Substack account. Let's go back to the dashboard. Let's go back to the settings. And let's type in money. And when you type in money, this set up paid subscriptions page appears. So you can connect with Stripe, which is a payment provider, to receive payments from your premium subscribers. So I'm going to click this blue button and it opens in a new page. And here I can get started with Stripe. So I'm going to press continue. I'm going to type in my password, press continue. I can add a mobile number. I'm going to add my personal number right here. And now I have received an SMS code, which I entered. And now it says your account is secured. Now I get this emergency uh, access code, which I'm going to download whenever I lose my password. Click next. Now my account is loaded. I have to make a couple of, give a couple of information regarding my, uh, regarding my business address. Once I've entered all my business details, I can press OK or continue in this case. Then I'm going to enter my payment details, my bank account, so that I can actually receive payments. 
And now you basically have to fill out uh, all of these settings and questions. You can uh, contribute to climate change if you want. You can uh, donate a certain percentage of your earnings to climate change if you want to do that. I'm going to skip this for now because this is only a test account. Then you can review all of your settings and you can submit your payment uh, setup. And once this has been loaded, you will be redirected to Substack. And now we have successfully connected the, our business and bank account to Substack. And now we can uh, create a subscription plan. So this means when we publish premium content, which I'm going to show you in a minute, uh, we can now decide how much people uh, should pay for it. In my case, I'm going to go with uh, $10 per month. And if somebody decides to get a yearly subscriptions, we're going to reward them by uh, charging only for 10 months. And uh, I'm going to type in $100. Uh, there's a founding member plan. This, this is basically a plan which allows your most loyal readers to subscribe at a higher amount than the regular plans. I'm just going to um, remove this founding member plan for now. You can add a group subscription discount. You can add a free trial, which I'm going to enable. And uh, then I'm going to press the button enable payments. And now this Substack has a subscription plan, which is really cool. And now we can start, or now you can start earning money with this. Now, how do you actually earn money? We have now connected the account, but uh, still, if we go to the website, all of the posts that are right here are free. Everybody can read them and access them. So the way to monetize this is to go back to the post section of your writer's dashboard and create a new post. So just like uh, I showed you earlier, um, we're going to create a post right now, but this is going to be a premium post. So my first premium post. We're going to enter a subtitle and then the post again. I'm going to paste some filler text uh, just like it did earlier. Upload the post image, a nice one. Uh, let's take, um, let's take uh, this one again. So you basically create a normal post right here. Once you press continue and publish the post, you can now click on uh, this turn on paid subscriptions and enable the payments. So you check this box and now the payments are enabled. Now people can actually pay for your posts. So if we go back to the posts, no, we don't want to do referrals at the moment. Uh, if we go back to the, uh, the drafts right here, so this is the post and press continue again, we can now decide that this will be published for our paid subscribers only. And we will allow the comments from the paid subscribers only, and we will publish it right now. And uh, you can decide to send a preview of this post to your free subscribers. Um, I'm not going to do this at the moment. I'm going to show this to you in a minute, but for now, we're just going to publish this as a premium post. And now if we go to the website, this is a premium post. If I go back to the front page, as you can see, so this is the latest post right here. This is the one that has been published and it has this small lock symbol right here. And this indicates that it's a premium post. This post has also be, been sent out as an issue of your, of your newsletter, but only to your paid subscribers. Now, how does a person actually become a paid subscriber? If we open a new private window and go to uh, the website and uh, going to skip this. So if somebody, if a new, new visitor comes to your website and sees this premium post and says, oh, this uh, looks really interesting and they click on it, they cannot read it. They, can, they only see the first paragraph. If they want to read it, they have to start a paid trial of your newsletter. And this is how you get people 
to become subscribers because here they have to now enter their payment details and this is how you can earn money. There are a couple of different ways how you can convert free subscribers into paid subscribers. One way is to obviously just publish premium posts and then people who want to read it have to pay. Another interesting strategy that you can use is uh, when I go back to the dashboard and create a new post again and uh, then put in a little bit of filler text, my second, second premium post, you can add something that's called a paywall. So you can decide that your free subscribers can only read, let's say, the first half of the post. And if you want to, if they want to read the rest, they have to subscribe. So for example, I could uh, generate a new line here and then go up here to this more drop down and add a paywall. And as it says right here, the paid content is below this line. So that means all of the content down here below the paid line is only accessible to the paid subscribers. And this is really interesting. You can give your free subscribers a preview and uh, make them interested by writing a very engaging and interesting first part of the post. And if they want to read the rest of the post, well, they have to subscribe and become a premium subscriber of your Substack publication. To show you how this looks like, in uh, once it has been published, I'm going to press on continue. Again, select that I want to publish this for the paid subscribers only, and then publish it uh, right now. And as you can see, now it says send post and free previews now. So this will be sent out to all of your subscribers, free and premium ones, but the free subscribers can only read the first part. So I can, so I'm going to click on this. Now it has been published. And uh, if I open this in a new private tab to simulate a random visitor that has not been subscribed yet, then as you can see, they can read the first part so the first few paragraphs are visible, but then if they want to read the rest of it, they have to become premium subscribers. Really interesting strategy to turn people into paid or, or premium subscribers. Another strategy that you can use to turn free subscribers into premium subscribers is um, that you can make offers to them. So if I uh, open this post and then click on the three dots and edit this post, when we created our first post, I showed you um, the call to action buttons and they will come in quite handy here again. Okay, so I insert a new line, press this buttons drop down right here, and then I'm going to add the special offer button. And then it asks me, ask me which offer I want to, uh, want to choose. If I open this drop down again, um, I can select the offer. Right now, I don't have any special offers, so I have to select this Create New Offer drop-down. And once I select this, I will be redirected and here I can create a special offer. I'm going to call this a, let's say, uh, the Summer Special Offer uh, Become a Premium Subscriber Now and get 33% off the normal price forever. This is really cool. You can um, decide that, uh, that these offers, that they are locked in forever. So you can incentivize people even more. If they see an offer, uh, it can be really interesting for them because if they accept this offer and you choose that the offer is valid forever, they can become a paid subscriber and have a discount that's valid forever. Not only will this cause more people to become premium subscribers, but at the same time, existing subscribers with these offers will hesitate to cancel the subscriptions because they know if they cancel the subscription, their discount is no longer locked in, which is really, really interesting. You can set uh, an offer. I'm going to set 33% as I mentioned here in the description. 
33%. And I'm going to uh, offer it so that it, th this discount is valid for ever. Uh, you can make a couple of more ex uh, options. You can create a special link for this offer. You could limit this offer to annual plans. Lots of settings that you can make here. I'm going to keep it simple and just create this offer as it is right now. And to do that, I click this green button, create offer down here. And now the offer has been created. If I click on the buttons drop down again with all of the call to action buttons, I can now insert this special offer by clicking special offer. And then in the drop down, the summer special now appears. I'm going to click on OK. And here it says get 33% off forever. And when I update this post, uh, this post is for everyone. And uh, then preview the post. Now this offer is displayed as a call to action button uh, on, on this post and will uh, get a lot of people to subscribe to your premium content. As you can see, lots of different ways to turn free subscribers into paid or premium subscribers. And obviously, whenever you insert a, uh, a call to action button into your post, uh, this call to action button will also be part of the email that has been sent out with this post. Because as I told you in the beginning, whenever you publish a piece of content on Substack, it will be posted on your website. And at the same time, it will be posted or sent out as an issue of your newsletter. And just as a little reminder, Whenever you earn money with your paid subscriptions, Substack will take a 10% cut of your revenue. Basically, Substack is free. Only when you start earning money with it, uh, then you have to uh, pay 10% of that to Substack. Which is cool in a way because Substack, they only earn money when you do. The company Substack only earns money when you do. So they are incentivized to uh, improve your experience and... Um, your abilities as a writer, because whenever you earn money, they earn money as well. So those were all of the monetization settings. Now I want to show you a couple of uh, smaller settings that are quite important as well. If I go back to the dashboard and uh, press settings again, one essential setting is the navigation bar. If I type in navigation, I can add new links to the navigation bar. Because a lot of times you have things outside Substack that may be relevant to your readers, to your audience. For example, maybe you have a Facebook group where your audience can discuss your topic. And then you could create a new link. Uh, I don't know. Title is join the community. Community. And then you can type in the link to your Facebook page. I don't know. Facebook.com and you would obviously post the correct link. Then you can save it. Once you've saved that and go back to the front page, then as you can see here, you now have this join the community link. And if someone presses this join the community link, they will be redirected um, to, in this case, only the front page of Facebook because that's what I entered. There is a second way to add links to your website, uh, which is for links that are not as important, but still relevant to your audience. For example, your social media links. You don't want them in your main menu, but you want to have them somewhere on the page. In this case, you could create something called homepage links. To do that, I'm going to search for the homepage links and there they appear. And then I can edit them. And I can create a link called, I don't know, Instagram. Check out my Instagram account, Instagram account as a subtitle. And the link, uh, obviously, link to your Instagram account. I'm just going to, for the sake of this tutorial, just put in Instagram.com. You would obviously post your correct Instagram account. And then you can create a group for that link. For example, uh, social media. And then you could add this link. Then you could add a second link. Let's say uh, you want to link to your um, YouTube channel. 
check out my latest videos, group, social media again, link uh, to your HTTPS youtube.com and add the link. Obviously you can create different groups. In my case, I only created social media, but you can create different groups as well. If I go back to the homepage, this is how it looks like. Down here at the bottom right, um, these links are displayed. So there's the main, uh, main group called social media. And then I have the links to Instagram and YouTube. And if somebody clicks these link, links, they will be redirected to your social media accounts, which can be quite useful as well. Another setting that should not be overlooked is the community section. Because after all, Substack is uh, all about community. It's all about your audience. And uh, if you scroll down this settings page, at one point there will be this gray section called community. This one right here. And here you can make a couple of settings regarding how people, how your audience can, can interact on your Substack website. When they can write comments or if they're actually allowed to write comments. Uh, if someone writes stupid comments or insulting comments, you can ban them. You can enable reports. You can show the profiles. You can allow that people can like all of that stuff. This is really interesting if you want to have like a little bit of engagement and want to involve your community. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can just turn off all the uh, community features and disallow your um, users from leaving comments and liking your posts. It is up to you if you want to do that or not. I think it's always uh, quite fun to interact with the community and your audience. So. Um, take a look at these settings and make your own decisions. And I, another setting that I already mentioned uh, at the beginning of the tutorial is the podcast setting. With Substack, you can add or set up a podcast. And you can do that by typing in podcast up here. And then uh, there's this podcast settings page. And you can set up your podcast right here by clicking this button, set up podcast. And then you can decide to start a new podcast and create the entire thing here. I'm not going to go into too much detail right here. I just wanted to show this to you that this is a possibility. The way this podcasting functionality works in Substack is very similar to the normal posts. You can create free podcasts, you can create premium podcasts. Whenever you publish a new podcast episode, it will be put on your website and it will be sent out to all of your subscribers. Mm -hmm. And the podcast that you generate here is a real podcast. So you will get an, your own RSS feed that you can then use to add your podcast to Spotify, to Apple Podcasts, to Google Podcasts, or all of the other podcast platforms. If that's interesting to you, check this out. And um, this is quite self-explanatory. You just fill out all of the information and then your podcast is created within a few moments. So these are the most important settings that you can make in Substack. I have now taken you through the entire process. You are now able to set up your own Substack website. I showed you how you can create the website, the newsletter, and how you can set up and hook up the monetization features. And it is now up to you to start with Substack and create your own uh, newsletter and publication business. If you like this uh, tutorial, then uh, I would really appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to this channel for more interesting tutorials. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Mike. See you next time. Bye-bye.